Welcome to curl 7.84.0. This is June 27, 2022. I just did the release earlier this morning and um, I'm here to tell you about it. So I'm Daniel. I'm, I'm uh, the lead developer and maintainer of curl. I work for Wolf SSL. You reach me on Twitter or uh, on my website. This is a presentation in the regular style. So I will get into some numbers about the release, uh, some of the new security stuff announced today, some of the new features slash changes, some of my favorite bug fixes, and a little bit about the future. It's actually less about the future than regular, but uh, let's get into that in a few minutes. So this is release 209. I've done it a few times by now, uh, starting to get a hang of it. This time around, we got help and uh, assistance bug reports from 51 different contributors. 20 of them are new, so we are keep on adding this, uh, you know, increasing the number of total number of people who have helped out, credited in the thanks file. 35 of these contributors were authors. They wrote commits that we have merged into the code and 13 out of those authors are new. So we maintain a pretty high, uh, a lot of people uh, entering the project and keep helping out and these are, of course, all in this period since the previous release, which is actually just this time around 47 days for reasons that I'm not going to get into today. But I had the release schedule adjusted already and then adjusted it again a few days ago because of an uh, uh, oopsie that I did that I will reveal on my blog uh, another uh, day maybe tomorrow so but it's outside of the scope of this presentation and in total we have been working on curl for 8865 days and of course this is just curl days we actually worked on something before we renamed it to curl so maybe we actually worked on it a few hundred more days but who counts right <coughs> um okay so this time around we i want to put the focus on four new security advisories and of course as usual regularly you go to this url in the bottom of the screen here to learn uh, about the particular security advisories that we have or the security well all the problems we have and in particular the new ones that i'm going to talk about uh, today so first out first off first in the line of security advisories for 7.84.0 and of course this um, has been around for a while go read up on all the details what this cve 2022-32205 set cookie denial of service and this is a fun one because it's um, uh, it's, it's not fun. It's a, this is a relatively recent bug actually and it um, it so happens that at some point a few years ago, we added, uh, we restructured how we manage internal uh, growing buffers. And when we nowadays manage internal buffers, we have a maximum size of the buffer that we allow it to grow to. You know, when we want to do an, an HTTP request, we only allow it to grow up to one megabyte. So, you. Uh, when if you grow it to larger than one megabyte in this case for an HTTP request, it'll sort of, you know, fail and return an error because something was wrong it shouldn't be that big unless you figure out a way how to grow it that big and then sort of trigger that on demand maliciously so in this case if you would be a server and you would be able to feed a lot of cookies to curl and then it would try to do another request to a server for which those cookies match it would create a, a request single HTTP request that would be larger than that one megabyte and it'll return er an error actually it will return out of memory I think uh, and if you could do this and since cookies you know you can set a cookie you can have a sister site setting cookies for another site and so on so it's um, it is actually possible to do this of course cookies are tricky in general but yeah this is at least how you can then pretty much make a denial of service for if you manage to insert cookies into a curl client that works like this. 
it is reported by Harry Sintonen, as all security advisors this time around. <clears throat> and this was the first one. Um, so the next one called, and you should see the, the CVE numbers are in a sequence here. So this is CVE 2022-32-206, HTTP Compression Denial of Service. Um, <clears throat> this is, so when, when an HTTP server returns content, it can uh, return the content compressed and then it'll tell us which compression it has used and it can use a series of compressions so you know compress 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 and it'll just tell you how many all those compressions and since curl didn't have any maximum number of compression steps it allows a, a malicious server could just tell curl to well it's a very very long sequence of compressions and that would basically lead to curl well, trying to allocate a lot of memory and usually then uh, running out of memory and returning error, but it, it would be a pretty effective uh, denial of service from a malicious server again, if you had the opportunity to insert this weird uh, sequence in a response. And again, this is reported by Harry Sintonen. And the third security flow. I'm not get going into the severity grading that we've done for these flaws, so read up on it. Uh, two of them are, I think we noted two of them medium, two of them low. Uh, but as you can see, they are, they are rather specific and it, they all require some, uh, well, sp particular circumstances to be able to get you know, exploited or, or abused by someone. This is the third one, CVE 2022-32207. Again, reported by Harry, Harry Sintonen. So when when curl saves files like cookies, alt service and, and HSTS data in a local file, lo locally in the file system, um, it it does this, it actually since a few years, it, it, it'll do this in order to make the save atomic, to make, you know, in case you have multiple processes saving to the same file, file name, it'll actually do this save in a temporary temporary file name and then do a rename as last step so if you would do you know three of them at the same time the final one would do that final rename and that would be the one to survive uh, instead of them all you know overriding and ruining each other uh, anyway it, it has worked like this for a few years but um, it also uh, has been flawed for this time, period of time because that final rename actually could widen the permissions of the file that it actually saved to. So instead of just preserving the, you know, the ownership, the properties, the mode on that file, it could widen it so that it, the file would become readable to more users than it was originally, originally set to be. Uh, pretty bad actually. So Harry found that, reported it, we fixed it. <clears throat> the last one for this time around uh, is a very niche niche security problem. Niche because uh, Kerberos FTP is probably not the most common protocol anyone. Actually, I'm, I'm not even sure anyone uses it these days. But if you would do Kerberos FTP transfers, um, there was a flaw in how we, how curl verifies um, pretty much how it, it doesn't really detect errors in the, in the stream properly. So it would uh, pass it on in a, in a bad way. So in, in certain circumstances, a man of middle attack could uh, insert junk in the stream without the client notice. This is CVE 2022-32208. And there again, Harry reported it. Um, yeah, those are the four ones this time around. Chances are you're not going to be um, affected by any of them, but who knows? <coughs> um, as, as I've mentioned before, the rewards for the security advisors these days are handled by the internet bug bounty. So we haven't set them in the project, but 
as I've learned, the Internet Bug Bounty has more or less fixed bounty levels. So I think the ones that are going for medium level are going to get rewarded 2400 USD and the low ones get 480 USD as a reward. I can almost promise. <coughs> um, so we have now uh, awarded a lot of money yeah, or given out a lot of uh, rewards for security problems in car. So new stuff this time. There's a zero in the minor release number, you know, 784.00, implying that we actually changed things, added features. So we added a few more knobs to the cockpit. We added a new command line option, the 248th command line option to the curl command line tool. Um, this is rate as in transfer number of transfers rate so you can actually slow down how often curl makes transfers in particular you know if you want to get a range of your uh, documents files urls i want to get these 10,000 documents uh, 10,000 urls because then uh, you can tell curl to only do uh, when you want when curl you tell curl to get 10,000 documents you can tell oh, but only get them 10 per minute 10 per second 10 per day per and so on so slow it down so that it so it doesn't overload or whatever um, fairly simple one but it's could be useful we added a very basic uh, informational options the curl info ca path and it's actually it's actually wrong on this slide because the other one is curl info ca info they're both, both prefixed curl info because they're informational, they're options to the curl easy get info function. It's just for an application to get information about these default values. Very basic, but really handy for, for some kind of applications. We also added a new callback, so far only implemented in the libssh2 backend. So if you want to get a host key management, uh, managing host key verification for for known hosts and stuff like that uh, you can do that with a callback we deprecated a few things and mm, you will not care about it because they are really really ancient things two command line options called random file and egd file they're I think I might have implemented them back in, uh, in early, well, maybe late 1998 or so when we did the uh, SSL the first time. And they're basically a way to feed the um, ran random number generator when you when we see the random number or when we seeded it back in a long time ago because uh, nothing in curl basically use these options anymore and they haven't been used for a long time with any of the modern TLS libraries. So basically we've, we're just adjusting to reality so now you can still use these options but they have no effect, they don't do anything so you keep using them but you can also just remove them from, from your command lines because uh, they're useless. And the underlying libcurl options are called like this, random file and EGG socket and again they're now just you know nothing they don't do anything because <coughs> there there was no underlying code using them anymore so we just cleaned it up and, and they now do nothing return okay um, so you can stop using them because they don't have any effect they haven't had any effect but now we officially have cleared it out another uh, few little few things that we added in this curl release is there's a new bit to get um information from a running libcurl called curl version thread safe. If you call the function curl version info, you can have this set in the flags. I think it's flag bit mask. And it is set if the curl global init function is thread safe, which it since this release is in most circumstances. I say most because I'm sure there will be some fun niche cases where it isn't, but we've made an, made an effort to make sure that you can now do global init in a thread safe way without uh, using pthread and or, or threading library for, to do it. So it's actually uh, finally a step 
forwards in the th thread safe journey that we've been working on for so long. But anyway, uh, this makes it much easier for a lot of applications to use global init, um, especially in dynamic plugin kind of situations and so on, where, where you don't actually have a single point where you can global init. Now you can global init as you want. It's a pretty good. And a maybe niche thing, but some of you will like it because now you can do uh, use Unix domain sockets to connect to a SOX proxy instead of using TCP. Uh, just like that, instead, so it will just go over Unix domain uh, instead of TCP. So if you run the SOX proxy on your local machine, you can reach it that way. And, and it supports all the SOX versions that we support usually over the regular TCP socket. Those were the new things. I numbered them to eight, but as you can see, maybe it's not actually eight, maybe they were more like six. Anyway, I also count 123 bug fixes in this release. Some of them very small, some of them typos, bug, uh, you know, spelling mistakes in the documentation and things like that, clarifications, but some of them slightly more interesting and, and uh, annoying or good or bad. Um, so let me get into my maybe not favorite, but uh, 15 ones that I think are uh, notable to, to mention. <coughs> so uh, first, there is improved CMake support. I always complain that we have a, a lack support for the CMake build. Then a lot of people tell me, no, it's good enough for me. I've used it forever. But uh, anyway, in this uh, release, we have s improved its support for building with PSL and uh, libidn2 support, if you build curl with those things. And you usually want to use those, uh, at least if you're on a Linux Unix machine. Um, there was a tricky, more cookie things uh, really. Uh, we fixed some problems when you do um, secure on, if you set a cookie secure and it's the same name and you do it over an HTTPS connection or an HTTP connection and you use the same name, it was some uh, confusion which one was to survive or not. We fixed that or made it better, more follow the RFC more clearly. We made the repository reuse compliant, as they call it. A reuse is, a, is an effort to, to make sure that all files in a repository have clear license and copyright conditions. So, uh, and we now check this in the CI systems and everything. So we make sure that all files that Git host, all, curl fi all files in Git for curl have clear copyright and license conditions. So, and we make sure that uh, they all are that going forward, which is should be good for all users of curl and or especially commercial or users that use curl as a dependency for something. We remove the experimental flag from the headers API, which then is a very small change because we basically just change the documentation and, and some build conditions. But now you can consider the headers API ripe for use in production. Uh, it's pretty handy if you want to get headers, HTTP headers, post um, transfers. Someone uh, called it, maybe it should have been named the fields API now because HTTP headers are nowadays more fields the term terminology has been tweaked a little bit, but we're sticking to headers because we use the term headers everywhere in libcurl for what we usually use to call headers. We now reject overly many HTTP to push promise headers, which was one of these fun things. So if you would get an HTTP push promise and the header, um, the server would provide you more or less of an endless stream of headers. Uh, curl would just keep adding those headers to an internal list until it would uh, reach out of memory. Um, now it doesn't. Now it'll re reject much early on and say, this is something crazy. I refuse to receive anymore. I think I 
put the limit on a thousand headers in a push promise and that's way beyond what a normal push promise stream ever has so those were the five uh, first so we i broke the folding header behavior in the previous release folded headers being the http one can split headers so when a server sends a response header it can actually send one header and then a continuation of that header on the next line if that line starts with a white space um, i didn't handle that properly in the previous release i broke it and now it works again and now it actually works for the H uh, for the headers api as well which it didn't before so it's even better than before if you happen to use one of those servers that using this deprecated behavior it's been deprecated since uh, rfc 7230 so since 2014 it's been no don't use it but apparently uh, they still happen every once in a while some of the fun things so <laughs> libssh which is one of the ssh backends for curl we learned a, f a while ago that it did, did something really fun that is close when we use it we pass on our sockets to say hey this is the socket we're using and we then we use the library and then when we shut down we shut everything down then we learned that libssh actually closes the socket we handed over to it even though it was actually our socket i reported that bug and now they have fixed that in the next release which puts us in this fun situation that we have to adjust this depending on which version of libssh we're using if we use the old one we know that it will close it for us but if we use the new one we will close it ourselves tricky and uh, we're now also searching when you use dotnet rc on windows you can put it in the directory for the user which is called user profile that's like an environment variable on windows uh, apparently other tools that are using dotnet rc use that path now we do as well sort of to make it a little bit more compatible or, or, or similar with with others a fun thing i did a separate blog post about this but now we support quoted strings in the dotnet rc file as well for when you want to provide a password containing a space for example or you want to have a Yes, in, in particular white space, but the world was also a bit of a um, complicated situation on how to do then, for example, double quotes within a password. Read up about it. It's messy and complicated. .NET RC is not the most solid uh, file format. So we should probably rather avoid it, but curl at least now supports it a little bit differently than before there were a lot of changes in the ngtcp2 backend ngtcp2 is for http3 support in curl one of the three backends we support and they really uh, changed a lot during this release cycle of curl um, not that they care particularly about our release cycles but they've done a lot of changes a lot of adaptions in curl to handle those so if you want to go as always if you want to go http 3 with curl today i really recommend you go with the latest version of the tls libraries the http 3 libraries the quick libraries and curl so, so to increase the <laughs> likeliness of it actually working before you file bug reports about it so uh, the final five i'm going to mention so when you speak the ntlm authentication method with that's an um, you know that's an old microsofty thing that's really messy it's a proprietary one that's never been really well documented and it's uh, it breaks a lot of uh, there's there's a lot of anti-patterns in how to do ntlm with with http because you authenticate the connection which you're not supposed to be with http because http is supposed to be stateless anyway when you do this with ntlm you actually send the host name as part of the protocol so i'm host uh, banana and you send it to the server and someone pointed out that this is a um, privacy leak and uh, well 
maybe it is, but it's you know the protocol says you should send the, the host name. So I'm I'm not sure I agree that it is a privacy leak because that's protocol. It actually says so, but still, apparently uh, other implementations they, uh, they just set a fake fixed host name there, so you don't actually have to pass along your real host name. You can just set whatever host name because since other implementations like the Firefox one apparently does this, it really tells us that servers don't really care about that host name. They'll just care about that it is a host name. So now we send the same host name as Firefox already always does. So uh, I think it was called machine. I don't remember, but it was something uh, silly, all uppercase. At least it's not your actual uh, local host name. We fixed a problem where, where we wouldn't really return error from what I call lethal poll or select errors that are, you know, um, when, the, when the error is sustained, it keeps happening all the time. So we really can't survive it. It can't really go on anymore. And then the, the multi functions would keep returning OK, but returning OK immediately, more or less leading to some um, maybe busy loops more or less ugly but now we've tried to handle it one of the things happened is we actually have slightly faster uh, case insensitive string comparisons because we noticed that we had some problems with OpenSSL that introduced their own string uh, case insensitive string comparisons and we you know struggled a little bit with those during this cycle which made us end up with our own being slightly tweaked and now slightly a little bit faster. Not that we do them so much so often that this optimization really matters much, but they're a few percent faster now. We, we have this interesting bug as in, so if you use the option path as is, it exists as a command line option and as a lib curl option. So basically it says do not try to remove dot dot slash sequences from the path when you send HTTP requests. Like if you do an HTTP request to example.com slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot slash or something like that, you know, and uh, by default curl would find dot dot slash and merge the path parts together as that's what the RFC tells us to do. But we have this option that says don't merge them. But if you would do a redirect or a multi, uh, see, multi path, or not path, multi step authentication sequence. So, for example, if you would do digest or NTLM, you would do multiple HTTP requests. So, in the follow up re um, HTTP requests, the path as is flag would have been dropped. So, it would uh, merge the paths then anyway, even if you had asked the curl not to. Now it doesn't anymore. A very, very niche fix. I bet nobody, that, mm, not that many people will actually uh, suffer from that or, or cheer the bug fix, but here it is. We actually now support the URL encode for curl URL get, which is one of those uh, functions in the curl URL API. I happened to run into it and I noticed that we didn't do that. so. If you, for example, if you allow a space in the URL, you can do that if you set a particular bit when you parse the URL. You can now ask for it to get URL encoded when you get it out so that you get the space converted. Uh, someone else also submitted another bug fix which makes you now possible to actually null, uh, nullify, clear uh, an entire URL if you set curl URL set set a URL to null, which was documented to work before, but it didn't. Now it does. So those were a few of the fun things that we have fixed. And if you go to the uh, release notes on the curl web page, curl.se slash changes.html, you will find links to all, all of the uh, other bug fixes that we've done as well. Um, we try to keep links to all the issues or mm, pull requests or whatever that is most relevant to those particular fixes we mentioned. 
we are most likely going to call the next release 7.85.0 because I think we are going to add more changes in the next release. There are more changes in the pipe and are being proposed, suggested. So that's li likely to happen. Um, we'll see. Unle uh, previously, it has happened that we find some you know, emergency fixes and then we do it emergency patch release instead but here's the hoping I've decided to just not mention as many pending ideas and features that we might get in a, in a coming release because it seems that a lot of our pending pull requests they just you know drag on for a very long time so I'm not sure they will actually happen in the next release or anything but I know that we are working on websockets I know this because I am working on the websockets code there's a pull request there's a, a wiki page for websockets detail we are tweaking the API back and forth the options how to do it so we're certainly not there yet the pull request is a very much work in progress but I think we're landing in how to do it how to think about it and, and what the API should look like so hopefully going forward i'm not sure uh, i can't promise any point in time or any particular release when this is going to happen it's I, I doubt that it will happen in the next release but maybe in the following one or something like that um, so websock is is coming definitely it is being supported and sponsored by sponsored by corellium so it will happen if we stick to the release schedule, and I think we are going to, or we're going to try to do it, we will ship this next release on August 31, which then should make uh, the release cycle a little bit more than 56 days this time. But uh, here's to hoping that we will stick to that. Um, yes. And of course, just the regular repeat mention, curl turns 25 next year, and we're aiming to do uh, curl version 8 release on curl's 25th birth birthday so yeah that's nine months away or so we will not do any particularly you know weird special features for that release it'll just be another release but we will bump to version number and do some extra celebrations and then move on if you have anything problematic with curl you need help i offer curl support for uh, via wolf ssl so get in touch and we will help you out uh, as soon as possible if you find any bugs issues typos i don't understand what's happening file an issue on on, on github github.com slash curl slash curl and you press new issue <clears throat> And if you have uh, experienced a security problem, you of course go to hackerone.com slash curl. And if, even if you don't have a security problem, you can go there and you can check out the hacktivity, whatever it says, and you can also read up on, on all our recent reports there that we are making public as soon as we can, usually, so that you can actually see how we have worked with the previous reports which might be fun, interesting, I don't know. You, you might um, enjoy that if you're into this sort of thing. Uh, most of them are from Harry anyway. <laughs> uh, and here, of course, then are our current official curl sponsors of June 2022. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of good people and my face is in the way of some of them, so now it's not. Um, a lot of good people doing uh, or current, you know, repeated donations to the project. We use the money for curl improvements, curl related expenses. Yay. Thank you, everyone. And um, that's uh, that's it for this time. You can, um, of course, find curl on, the, on this uh, URL, as you know. Uh, I don't think this is a surprise to anyone. So this is and was um, curl. 7.84.0 I uh, see you again I uh, hope I'll see you again um, at the uh, next release in about 8 weeks uh, give or take